welcome to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lerke and this is a podcast all about knitting, about knitwear design, about my life in general and what I'm up to, um, but mainly about the <laughs> knitting. Um, I'm coming to you from the southern part of Denmark on a small island called Fyn um, and I live just next to the woods with my partner and our two children and it is absolutely beautiful now. Uh, the weather is quite gloomy, but the forest is all on fire <laughs> and all the beautiful fall colors are out and I absolutely love it. Um, only thing is that the weather is giving me a bit of uh, trouble with uh, what I'm doing besides knitting uh, because I like to go out and uh, take pictures and today I was planning to go out and shoot some video and some pictures um, while we still have the beautiful fall colors outside because I am seeing that the the leaves are falling and I know that it's only a matter of a few weeks probably and then it will be all bare so I really wanted to go out but it's uh, raining like very fine rain and it just I can't it's gonna be really annoying with the lens getting splattered with rain all the time so instead I thought I could sit down and talk to you guys it was actually also my plan but since it's Friday today and as I said I know there's a limited time for the beautiful fall weather I thought instead I would go out but yeah trying to make the best of an annoying situation here and I also miss talking to you so it's really nice um, I have quite a few things to share with you uh, I've been knitting a lot, I've been trying to write down some patterns, I'm starting to feel a little more in the knitting, uh, yeah, feel more like knitting again. I even watched a few podcasts, which I haven't done for I think half a year or something. I'm really out of the loop with everything going out, going on, going on in the knitting community, which is a pity because I used to really love it, but for some reason I just haven't been feeling like, um, yeah watching podcast connecting as much as I used to so the first thing I would like to share is a finished object and I feel like it's been a while since I finished something it's a pair of mitts and if you follow me on Instagram you will have seen a little few sneak peeks here and there um, it's actually a really new design I just had the idea uh, knitted in a couple of days and wrote down the pattern and right now it's being tested so it was really nice with something a bit quicker because as you will see later I'm also working on some bigger projects that takes a lot longer uh, and as it happens many times with my designs this design came from a place of need uh, or the idea because I was missing something really warm and cozy to wear on my hands now that it's getting colder but I still would like to have my fingers free if I'm using my camera or my phone or wiping my kids noses or something um, so it's kind of uh, annoying to wear gloves uh, for me when I'm out um, so I thought a little bit about it and I came up with this idea and it's a pair of um, fingerless mitts and as you can see they have a nice little motif on the front and on the back they are just all garter stitch um, and the thing that I'm almost most excited about is the cuff because I made this uh, one by one ribbing cuff with a tubular bind off but when you open it up it covers your whole hand and that means you won't be cold when you're riding your bike or just going for a walk but if I need my fingers I can easily fold them up and I have my fingers free uh, and the other part that always inspires me is nature and you can easily see that in this design um, they have this little leaf or like a climbing plant going up the front and yeah I just thought it was really fitting for this beautiful green color uh, it's a nice thick rustic worsted weight yarn um, that I actually I have the ball here it is a yarn I was sent some time ago uh, by the wonderful Yule, which um, she has a natural dyeing um, like studio. What was I going to say? She has a studio <laughs> and she makes a natural dyed yarn and she sent me this some time ago, like a year ago, more, uh, just to try out. But I had it lying there. I, if I don't have an idea, I 
yeah, I just wait until something comes to mind. And I thought it would be perfect. It's um, it's called Rustic DK, Rustic Merino DK, I think. But this is, for me, it's like a worsted weight. It's very thick, very, very thick. So, um, yeah, it's perfect. It's for a quick knit and it keeps your hands really warm. And the color is stunning. I love this forest green, deep green color. And with natural dyes, you have so many little nuan nuances, <laughs> little, like the color varies from place to place, but it's a solid, it's like a solid, but with a slight variation in the color. And I think it's absolutely beautiful. They're so warm and cozy. And I used up, I think this is 40 grams left and it was a hundred grams gain. So I have, it's around 60 grams to make the mitts. Um, maybe you can see here actually, like, I don't know if you can see it, but there's like a little darker bits and, but very slightly, uh, it's a beautiful yarn. And yes, I decided to name these Yedra which is Spanish. I hope I'm saying it correctly. I never heard it pronounced before. I just saw it in writing. Um, I asked for a little bit of help with the name and one of my followers on Instagram, I think, Elena is the name. Oh, I hope it's always with Instagram names I get confused. Um, but she suggested uh, Yedra and I think it's perfect. It means Ivy in Spanish. Did I say that? It means Ivy in Spanish. Um, and since I speak Spanish and have a background and a degree in Spanish, <laughs> I, Spanish language and culture, I, uh, I thought it was quite fitting. Um, so yeah, and as you can see, it has this motif in the front and on the sides, it has these little braids running down. And maybe if you remember my Favo sweater, um, it, you remember these braids, I used them before. They are so much fun to knit because they don't really, you only make them at the end of the knitting. So, yep, it's a really simple, easy little project. And as you can see, I made them quite with a long cuff because I like that they go into my jacket. And if I have a little bit shorter sleeves, they will um, be really nice. So I tried them on out a couple of times. The only thing I actually ended up changing is I moved the thumb a little bit because here it's just on the side and actually it keeps turning the pattern a little bit, so it kind of uh, makes the pattern go this way. So instead I move the thumb a little bit more into the hand. Um, I find that that's actually where your thumb is kind of sticking out like this, not on the sides and not on the middle. <laughs> the more and, yeah. So I moved the thumb just a little bit for the pattern. Um, I'm not going to re-knit my mittens, but it was that's why I always try to wear my stuff before writing the pattern or when I'm, yeah, want to write a pattern. So, uh, what else is there to say? Yeah, I'm really happy about these and I already, I'm going to wear them a lot, I'm sure. So they will be coming out in, I think, a few weeks. I need to take pictures, which was my plan today. <laughs> Since the weather is not cooperating, I don't know, hopefully next week. Um, yeah, so that's the plan for so to the next weeks, if I can have them finished, uh, they're a really fun little project and I'm very happy with how they turned out. So I was thinking about if I could use this little pattern in some, with something else. And I came up with an idea, which I've been working on only today. So this is what I need this morning. Um, I need for a couple of hours. And this is the same pattern. And here you can see the, bra the braids are not yet uh, made so they're just the uh, knit stitches and this is how it looks uh, knit up in my uh, in my Gotland yarn which I have spun from my parents Gotland sheep so it's all organic yarn and this as I told if you watch my podcast before this um, time I had it made with Romney which is absolutely amazing um, so it's a 50-50 Romney uh, Gotland and I really love this yarn so I thought it would be actually perfect to make it's rolling up a bit on itself uh, because I haven't blocked it but it's not really a problem because um, once you wear it it will lie flat um, so I made this little strip of uh, of the pattern and I just thought it would be absolutely perfect for a headband 
so I'm almost there. I just need a little bit more. Um, I wear headbands a lot because I'm biking and I like something that stays on my ears and I find that hats, unless they have flaps or something, they actually don't cover your ears in a way that the wind will stay out of your ears. <laughs> And also my hair is very thick and if you haven't noticed I have a lot of thick hair and it always pushes up hats um, so I thought it would be better to have uh, yeah to just make a headband I have uh, used my dry headband quite a lot because it's um, yeah it looks like a bonnet now I used my dry headband quite a lot because it is um, it's also knit in the Gotland yarn and it is really warm and I love it so much but it's starting to be a little bit old and with headbands they kind of, with time, the elasticity, they get a little bit big. I could of course shorten it but I just thought I wanted to make something new and as I was saying uh, with this pattern you just, you make the braids that you can see here. So here you can see there's a braid running on the side and you make those in the end. Uh, this yarn is a little bit more light and lofty um, than the rustic merino. So that one is quite tightly spun and very bouncy and this one is a little more light and lofty so it has a different feel to it but I think it works very well with the pattern so I can't wait to have this finished and I was also thinking if it keeps roll if I find it annoying that it rolls up even if I don't think because sitting on my head it won't be rolling up but if I find it annoying I might put on some fleece fabric on the back but then it will be really warm so I have to think about that but I will probably make uh, I will make two patterns for each one but I will probably make like a bundle so you can get them for like a combined price I think that would be nice yeah, I'm really happy with how this one is looking this well. Uh, it's a beautiful yarn. I'm, yeah, I'm very pleased with it. I get some questions every now and then. I sold it all at the last shop update. It was just a small batch, but I'm having a new batch coming. Uh, I just dropped off the yarn, recent, uh, the yarn, the wool at the mill, which is a local mill. Um, and I dropped the wool off and I will have wool spun uh, yeah, it, it, he said it could take up to five months because they're very busy at the moment, but sometime in the winter, early spring, I will have more of my yarn. Um, and it won't be the same completely because he didn't have more of the Romney. Excuse me. <laughs> he didn't have more of the Romney, so I will have to see what I can, what I'm, yeah, how it's gonna be. It will be always a little bit different, but always with the Godlin wool. Um, and I also, uh, I haven't told him yet if I want it to be a worsted weight like this one that is 200 meters per 100 gram or I want it to be the same length as my previous yarn which was a two, 275 meters. Um, I asked him if he could do something in between like more like a DK but uh, he doesn't with the old machines. Yeah, he prefers using the, 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 how you say the, the, the kind of the length that they used to uh, but I'm thinking if I should do so let me know if you're more if you like more worsted weight or like a DK heavy sport DK weight um, because it makes I'm still indecisive I have uh, some patterns coming up with the uh, DK weight um, so that would be nice to have some yarn for but again you can use my yarn for anything so let me know what you're thinking if you what kind of weight you prefer I think this weight is very nice, but I could oops, that's the big, I could of course make something different. Um, so yeah, I oh and another news from the spinning mill uh, that's called Yelholt Ulspinneri. They are actually uh, opening a web shop tomorrow, I think. So I don't know. Uh, Today is Friday, so it will be opening up on Saturday which means uh, people have been asking me if they can get yarn from the place and it's going to be possible to get yarn from Yelhold, which is amazing because it's a place that I I think it's... I'm so lucky that it, it still exists, uh, like a small family-run mill here in Denmark. It, there are only two mills where you can have your own yarn spun and that's the only mill where you can have it spun, spun in small batches. So, uh, yeah you can go and check out the web shop. Uh, I will put a link below just for this, the website and, and then you will have to see how the web shop is looking. I... I 
have another work in progress and another design that I haven't shared, so I thought it would be fun to share it today. Um, it's going to come out in the winter, uh, so I will actually have to write down the pattern quite soon. I'm working with this beautiful yarn from the Fiber Curl. Uh, this is a part of the design um, or yarn support program that they you can uh, use the yarn for your designs. You have to send in a submission and if they pick your design you can be lucky to work with some of the beautiful yarn and I've been longing to work with the yarn for quite some time but uh, when I saw this yarn, that is a new yarn from them, uh, it is uh, alpaca, suri alpaca, uh, cotton and merino I think. I don't have the label, there were no labels on the, um, on the yarn uh, but yeah, it's a very beautiful yarn. It's uh, like um, the surreal packet that you maybe know, but it's a DK weight, so it's quite thicker and it's really nice because then you can work up things a little bit quicker. You don't have to hold it double. Um, and it's a wonderful, wonderful yarn. It's so nice. It's a bit fluffy, um, but I really like that. Uh, I don't find it annoying. It's not, I hope it's not gonna shed all over, but I will see. Uh, yeah, so I'm. This is my second or third skein. I think it must be the third skein, and uh, this is the design that I'm. Oh, it's inside out. Let's just turn it around. This is the design I am working on in this yarn. Let me see if you can see anything. I have to hold it quite a lot. <laughs> it's massive. <laughs> I'm almost done with the body. I just need a little bit more. As you can see, it's very lightweight. It's very fluffy. Fluff. It's a little bit transparent, but not too much. Um, so yeah, I wanted to make an all-over textured sweater, as you have seen me do before with the um, with uh, the, my favorite sweater, of course. I really like. I, I keep getting ideas for these all-over textured sweaters, like a little bit classic with the front panel. Um, so this one again has a front panel um, and then the back is all uh, must stitch, I think, yeah, must stitch all over. It has a very interesting construction, um, so it is knit in the round. Once you're done with the neck, you knit in the round and it has increases along the shoulders. It has very dropped shoulders. Um, so they start quite low, uh, there's no, it's all knit in one piece um, with no seaming and this is the second sleeve over here. It has these little cherries running down the sides, it has this cable and a kind of, uh, yeah, the stitch going around, um, the stitch in the front. I really like finding the perfect, it's such a fun uh, challenge for me, finding the perfect stitches to match together to get this idea that I had in my head. I think the fit is amazing so far. Um, it's quite uh, dropped, so if you lift your arms, it of course it has a little bit will lift with you, but since it's a very, has a lot of ease, it's not really a problem for me. I was a little worried about that, but I really like how it's looking. Um, and it's so cozy, I can't wait to wear it. So I have to finish up just a little more on the body. I want, don't want it to be cropped or anything. I just want it to be very easy. Um, and of course, ripping, and then I am going to do the sleeves all in must stitch. So I'm very excited to have this one finished. It's called uh, Moral. Moral is um, kind of cherry. Uh, like, there's no, I tried to look it up just to be sure I was not saying something weird, but uh, the way I've always been told is we have Kirsebe, which is cherries, and they are the red ones, and then the light ones or lighter ones are called Moral or Morala. Uh, but I don't know in English if there's any difference. Um, it's called Moral because of that, because of the little berries, cherries on the side. So, um, yeah, I think those are my current whips that I'm working on. I have some other whips that I'm not working on, but that's what I have coming up. Um, that's uh, everything I've been working on when it comes to knitting. I have actually one thing I wanted to show you, which is very disappointing, and I'm 
quite sad because I talked to I think last time about my Mondim socks um, and I was really excited and really happy that I had them finished and I loved them so much that I was wearing them all the time but I have to be honest uh, in this podcast because I talk a lot about yarns in a positive way and I also talk about um, like I don't like superwash yarns and I don't want my yarns to have nylon if I can avoid it but I think with socks I must say I don't know if it's this yarn or it's the really the nylon that's the problem but I wore these socks quite a lot and I was really happy and one day I wore them out um, for I was out shooting uh, pictures all day and video and I was not walking that much but I did a, quite a bit of walking and uh, when I came home I took off my socks and I went there. I haven't been wearing them for that long and there was a huge hole they just kind of said bye bye after just a short time of wearing these socks huge hole and the other sock has also uh, just the beginning of a hole well it's it's a hole let me see if I can um, and yes it was quite warm so you see my finger is already poking through it was quite warm on the day when I wore them the shoes were maybe rubbing a little bit but I never tried I never had any socks like other handed socks that couldn't um, manage that so what I will do is I will take off the the toe because luckily this time it only happened at the toe so I can take off the toe and I will re knit them in a different yarn because I'm not gonna do it, do it again with this yarn which is a pity because I really like these socks to be just all over the Mondim um, but I apparently these are for house socks uh, <laughs> like I don't think you should wear them out um, like make socks in this yarn and wear them out uh, of course I did wear them for for I mean, quite a lot. <laughs> I was really happy about them, but uh, they, I mean, they should have lasted, I don't know, at least half a year. I think that's at least one season of uh, wear before the having to mend or... So, a bit disappointed on the Mondim yarn. It's a very beautiful yarn and I, it's very lovely to work with. I really like the stitch. I really like how it, it is. Um, I made other socks in the past with, the, with this yarn where I used a different yarn on the toes and the heel. And I think that's maybe the way I have to go about it if I want to use this yarn again. Uh, if you tried working, if you tried making socks with the Mondim and you experienced similar things or not, let me know. The other thing and that I talked about last time was the color difference in these two. And I have um, washed them since last time. Uh, and I don't know if you can see, but there's it's still like this one is warmer and more washed out. And this one is yeah darker and i just don't understand it this one i finished maybe half a year before this one and it was lying out on um it was sitting on the sock block actually but it was not in direct sunlight at all but the color faded i guess that's what happened faded quite a bit from one sock to the next um yeah so that didn't it wasn't just the washing it just simply must have faded. Um, I don't mind things fading, but it's a little bit weird when you have two different colors. So I still love Mondim. I still really love Retrosaria, but I just want you to be have a realistic idea of how long the socks will last. Um, maybe think about using something with uh, nylon or polyamide or whatever they put in the socks actually on my other socks uh, that I made with the Mondim yarn I used a sock yarn that has a uh, rami in and that seems to hold up fine but I also didn't wear them as hard as these so I cannot say yet um, but the rami might be a way to go about if you don't want to use yeah and I think you can also use uh, maybe see, there are some ways um, mohair I, I know Oh, who was talking about this? Was it Emma from Woolly Mammoth? I know some people have been doing research and trying to figure out uh, things about socks. But again, I haven't watched podcasts in quite a while. Even if I really love these podcasts, I haven't watched any, unfortunately. Um, well, actually, the only podcast I watched recently... Uh, I watched two podcasts recently that I want to mention. One is um, The Gentle Knitter. Uh, and I actually... 
Um, what I mean, I almost always watch her episodes, but uh, I watched this one specifically because she was uh, she just finished her Brine sweater, which is one of my designs, and I really love Nicole, and I love what she makes, and I was so honored that she made one of my designs. So uh, she made a be beautiful beautiful wo she made a beautiful version using um, lip lobby, I think. Uh, and yeah, it is amazing. So if you want to see how her version looks like, go watch her latest episode. Um, and it's as always just nice to catch up with her, and because she has such a nice aesthetic and uses very similar similar yarns to what I like. Uh, I also was suggested by YouTube, which clearly thought I should watch some more podcasts to watch a podcast um, by a Norwegian knitter. It's a new podcast, and I see she got already quite a lot of followers in a short time, so um, maybe you already know her, but she's called Knitting Tradition, and I watched an episode, I will go back and watch some more, and I really liked what she's making and her yarn choices, she also likes natural rustic yarn, so that's very nice, and actually in her the episode I watched, I don't know if it's the last one, I think it was episode 5, She's almost only using Danish yarns, which is really funny because I always want to try some Norwegian yarns, um, but because uh, Norway is not part of the European Union, uh, I c you can risk to get some um, extra fees when you're buying yarn from Norway, so I'm, yeah, it just makes it a little more difficult. Um, but I was, uh, yeah, she was using all Danish yarn, and I thought that's funny because I always want to try to use some more Norwegian yarns. Uh, go watch her if you are looking for a nice, uh, relaxing podcast to watch. Um, as an as and, and, and as I said, I haven't watched uh, many other podcasts lately, uh, so I haven't. I have. I don't have many other recommendations, but those two were really nice. I um, have one more thing that I wanted to share that I've been doing, um, and you probably, probably, if you. Uh, have watched, follow me on Instagram, you maybe have seen my first attempt at making a reel. Um, I've never been on TikTok and since Instagram is really trying uh, hard to make us want to make reels, I thought about how I could make something that is more me. And since I had a little project that I wanted to share, I thought it was a good idea. So I put up the reel and it seems to have been uh, quite successful. So. I made this yarn in the um, uh, in the reel. You can see me working on this yarn, and this is a, a hand dyed yarn that I made uh, with walnut husks. I have all the rest of the pile here. I still have to skein it. Um, I didn't skein it straight away because it was quite um, yeah. It was still a bit damp, and I didn't want to risk it being damp so I just left it out uh, but I should skein it and this is yarn that was uh, it's originally a basic yarn uh, which is a Danish yarn it's a Shetland it's a Danish yarn company but it's a Sh Shetland yarn um, I think it's called Shetland mm. it's a uh, I think it's fingering weight I bought it actually when I was in Poland uh, some years ago and I have actually an episode from when I went there and I bought this yarn. Uh, it's one of my very first episodes of this podcast um, and I, it's just been lying there. It's a very light grey and it's not that I don't like the colour but I thought I have a sweater's quantity of this yarn and I could try to dye it. Uh, and I wanted to dye with walnut husks since last year but last year um, the yeah I didn't manage to pick them up before it was too late. So this year I was at my parents' place, they have a walnut tree and I asked if yeah, I could take some and of course I could. So I brought back a little bag of uh, walnuts and I dumped it in a bucket with water and I left it there for a week. Uh, it was really hard to wait uh, but I saw the water getting really dark brown, beautiful golden color. Um, and so I dumped the skeins into the water. Um, I probably should have had a little bit more water if you watch it. It's very, uh, it's just not going completely into the water. But actually, I thought it could be fun to see because I left all the husk in there. If you take them out, you will get a more uniform color. But I left the husks in there. And you can see everywhere 
every place the yarn has been close to the husks, it has this amazing... I wish I it, it was all this color, but I guess next time I try next year, I will really take a lot of husks because I love this color. It is such a dreamy, caramelly, golden color. It's so beautiful. Um, so yeah, the rest of the yarn is like a light sandy bra brown with the gray undertone and then it has these beautiful uh, specks I can show you also in the skein. It is like, you will just see little specks of it here and there, like specks. It's not specks, it's more like a splash. <laughs> um, so I think it turned out really, really nice. I'm don't know what I will make with it, some sweater. Maybe I will add some more hair, but I'm afraid if I add more hair, because it's very fine and knitting with size three needles, a sweater, it's, I, I really don't know if I have the patience at the moment, um, but I, I'm afraid if I add in more hair, it will like, you will not be able to see as well the splashes. So I'm thinking what to do. Um, what I can make with it, if you have any good ideas. As I said, I have how many skeins? One, one, two, three, four, five. I think I have six skeins of it. And I used a little bit of one of the skeins, so. Yeah. So this is, uh, it's very nice. Uh, it was very fun to do. Oh, and I left it, uh, how many days? Three, two days, I think, in the bucket. And of course, the longer you leave it, the longer you let it seep, the more color it gets. Um, when you are working with a natural dye, um, I didn't modern this yarn, so again, it doesn't take as much the color. But since it's uh, dyed with the uh, walnut husks, it doesn't need to be modernated because the walnuts have tannins in them. So that makes the color stick. Um, so I, I could have left it longer if I wanted a darker, possibly darker color. I also, um, I, uh, what was I saying? Yeah, I left it for two days, then I hang it up to dry, just let all the water uh, run off outside, and then I washed it afterwards. Um, there was still quite a bit of color coming out when I rinsed it, uh, so I tried to rinse it as much as I <laughs> could, but uh, I'm, I hope it's not gonna, yeah, I might have to. I will, of course, wash it again if I need something, so I hope that's enough. Um, that's it for today's episode. I hope you enjoyed this little chat about yarn and knitting and I will talk to you all very soon. Stay safe wherever you are. I hope the whole pandemic where you are is not too crazy. Um, here at least things are getting back to being very restricted. We are starting, we have to wear masks everywhere. So I actually have to make some masks because un up until now we didn't have to wear them everywhere. And now we have starting, if you go into the supermarket or the baker or anywhere, you have to wear masks. So I, sh I think I should make some masks. Hey, if you have any good ideas for patterns, uh, let me know. Uh, that will also be very nice. I have quite a lot of fabric, so I can figure something out, but I don't know what pattern to use. Yep, that was it. Stay safe, take care, and I will talk to you all soon, I hope. Bye.